What a weekend it was. Wild card weekend kicked off with the Colts taking down the Texans. They got a big day from Marlon Mack. He rushed for 148 yards, the most in a playoff game in Colts franchise history. With a win over Seattle, Dallas gets its fourth straight victory in the wild card round. 25 years old, Dak Prescott becomes the youngest quarterback in Cowboys history to win a playoff game. And the Chargers took care of business against the Ravens, heckling Lamar Jackson for much of the afternoon. They sacked him seven times, tying a franchise record for a playoff game. And then there were the Eagles, who rallied behind a late game-winning drive by Nick Foles. Bears kicker Cody Parkey missed potential game winner with 10 seconds left that bounced off the left upright. Hello, everybody. We are glad you could be with us. It's a wild Monday after a wild card weekend. I'm Wendy Nix. Adam Schefter, Ryan Clark, Tim Hasselbeck, and Lewis Riddick checking in mm. uh, for the next 90 minutes or so of NFL Live. And there is plenty to get to. It is Monday, Lewis. You remember what that is? Overreaction right, Monday. Sure do. Let's overreact, shall we? <laughs> uh, we'll start with the reigning Super Bowl champs, the Philadelphia Eagles. I'll say this because you know it's coming. The team, the Eagles, should keep Nick Foles. Ryan Clark, I'll start with you. Is this an overreaction. This is an overreaction, and it's, it's the best kind, right? It's the Monday morning quarterback kind because we start to think, oh, my goodness, Nick Foles is, he does something different for this team. This team plays better with him. They've been on two runs in the last two seasons, late on, later on in these seasons, on to the Super Bowl with Nick Foles. But Carson Wentz is the quarterback of the future. It's the reason you gave up so much to draft him number two overall. And we've seen the talent. We've seen this guy be on an MVP pace before an injury last year. And Carson Wentz is going to be this team's quarterback going forward the the thing is you have to get rid of Nick Foles you need Nick Foles out of the building because as long as Nick Foles is in the building you're going to have these questions Mm -hmm. there there was a time last night when the the Chicago Bears were driving and and we were joking in here that Carson Wentz was excited because he had a little smile on his face he was laughing and and obviously we, we, we were joking about it and we were being facetious but There has to be some type of tension there when you see a quarterback do what Nick Foles has done the last two seasons, knowing that Carson Wentz is your quarterback of the future. Well, I will say this. By all accounts, these two have handled it just about as well as you can, Tim. But the point is what it is. It gets old at some point. Both guys appreciate and have a true friendship with one, one another. I think this. I think it's an overreaction this Monday. (laughs) <laughs> a Monday in February. TBD. And Monday in February, we could potentially have a dis- different answer. Listen, sometimes it's hard to explain. You see a running back who, you know, will play better than a running back, but you're like, well, the other guy's faster, the other guy's stronger, the other guy catches the ball better out of the backfield, but why are his numbers the same? Why are his numbers better? And I think that, look, that's what's going on right now. I mean, the fact of the matter is there's a more athletic, more talented, younger, less expensive guy that is injured that is the future of the franchise so look I, i'm going to say it's an overreaction but t- today but I, i'm willing to change my yeah. mind in a couple well weeks. that's the interesting part and that's why this is the most interesting overreaction question that i think we've done all season long because it's absolutely in overreaction right now today yeah. today but what if what if nick Foles leads the eagles into new orleans and beats the saints where the Eagles got obliterated with Carson Wentz earlier this season, 48-7. What if he gets him back to another conference championship? What if he wins another Super Bowl and another Super Bowl MVP? Has there ever been a player <laughs> in any sport, a two-time Super Bowl MVP where the team is jettisoning during the offseason because it wants to get to the better quarterback in Carson Wentz? To the Wentz. future. It's, Carson Wentz is a transcendent talent and a quarterback you want to build your franchise around. And you don't want to get rid of him. And you want to hold on to him. But the longer this goes on, and the more success Nick Foles has in the postseason, and the deeper they go into the playoffs, the more entertaining this question hey guys, gets. They scored, now, they scored 16 points now, y'all. Matter. Like, we're, we're, we're doing a whole lot. Yeah, look, but a win is a win. Points. No, a win is yeah, a win. Yeah, and but, they survive in yeah, advance. Yeah, but it, it's dangerous to give QB wins and have that be a real Well, we stat. do it for everybody. Else. I know, but it yeah. doesn't mean it's right. Forget the QB you know, win, though. It's a but, team win. Yeah, exactly. So, look, if Cody Parkey makes the kick, then we're talking about this whole game in a totally different context. And we, But that's not to discount anything that Nick did in the game, okay, because the throw that he makes to Golden Tate is awesome. The throw that he made to Zach Ertz earlier in that drive mm-hmm. was even better than that one. The, you know, so he was – look, he's been dealing. There's no question about it. What's interesting about this for me from 
Carson Wentz standpoint is there's so many there's a lot of things that he can learn from Nick right now watching that hopefully will make him a better quarterback in the future and that's this number one he is more physically talented than Nick is but he doesn't play true to the offense and let it work for him the same way that Nick makes it work for him and this is this is something that the coaches recognize and they see it's funny how qu- much quicker and really within structure that this offense looks when Nick is out there because he just lets it work for him because that's his mentality. Carson's going to need to change that part of it and say, look, every play doesn't have to be a hero ball play for me. And that's one of the things that gets him into trouble. It's one of the things that frustrates the staff about him is that sometimes it's like, Carson, you don't have to power through everything. Everything doesn't have to be the perfect Aaron Rodgers throw because with Nick, it just looks so smooth and easy. It's just like, okay, yeah, you know, they said, here's the read, here's the read, here's the read, and I just go through it and I do it. I give it to my guys and let it work. I think Carson can be better because of this now, but you're right. If he wins a couple more games, you're sitting there but, going. But, I mean, but, Luke, I, but, I, I just think it's a different we, conversation. But you're, talking, you're talking about those plays, but this is the same reason we were saying that he was going to be the MVP because it starts off early in the season last year. There's the, the play. He flips around in the pocket in Washington, gets the ball downfield to Nelson Aguilar. There were many of those plays in that season, and the reason they were the number one seed last year wasn't because of Nick Foles. Right. It no, was I, because of Carson Wentz, and I think – I just think it's, it's, it's really when, when you start to try to say, okay, they've, they've won these games and it's all because of Nick Foles. If you go back to the division round last year, it was because of defense when they're playing Atlanta. Look, and I'm, so a lot of those things to me, like we can't just say if he wins okay, it, well, you move Wentz on to Carson Wentz. quarterback in New Orleans earlier this season. They got blown out. Again. It's not how it works. Blame, Adam, I'm not Adam, blaming it on But that's him. not how it works, though. That's not how it works. Well, you look, in that, in that game also, the secondary, you gave a you, could, you could have put four of these chairs out there and they would have covered better than the secondary <laughs> did in that game. It, that, I'll tell you what, if you really want if you, if you really, really to start really looking at what is really the genesis of this team kind of having a turnaround, Spin look the there defense. first. Yeah, okay. I know, but, but here's the truth. But here's <laughs> the deal, when we look at quarterbacks, plain and simple, no one says, well, Tom Brady has six because Adam Vinatieri is a great kicker. Okay? Nobody says that. Nobody says uh, Peyton Manning should have two if Hank Basket can recover an but, onside but you, kick. But, 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 when you're, but when you're, like but when you're valuing. It all down to winning. It's not, but when you're valuing the, the position. It doesn't always win the right, game. Right, I understand that. But the reality is, is that's how everyone that, views that's them. That's the way we so the front them. office. But, right, that's what we're talking about. I understand. I understand. That's not how you I pick your guy. That. But listen, you get the Philadelphia Eagles and Howie Roseman, those guys are going to have a real tough decision. Okay, but I, I, I know, what, I know what you're saying, football, but, but it, like, on the inside, about, listen, I when get you're it. making that decision, and so, you I, can't just go, well, quarterback wins is what matters, and it doesn't matter no, how else my yeah, guys win. Listen, the quarterback responding in the a most team. crucial moments, yeah. but, but the, quarter, the team wins and loses the game, not just one quarterback. But the quarterback, when he converts on fourth and one down in tight in that moment and then does it again in another pressure-packed moment, you go, listen, yeah, maybe he'll throw 19 interceptions next year during the regular season. But we know that this guy in the biggest moment on the biggest stage that exists in this sport can deliver. Sure. You don't listen. As good as Carson Wentz is, you don't know that yet. Let let, let me make a very simple question: Why has this team? Why has this team responded the way it has? And reeled off four straight wins. And why has it played great winning football with Nick Foles? I, I, again, I think Carson Wentz is a transcendent. But explain this to me. This, 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 this is how I explained it when he played the first week, right? When, when you come into the locker room and you start talking about the different things that you have to do with Nick Foles, it's, it's, it's preached around the locker room. Defense, we got to pick up the pressure. Secondary, we can't give up the big plays. Doug Peterson understands we're going to have to try to run the ball. And you've seen the running attack down the stretch become a bigger part of this offense because they understand with Nick Foles, you can't expect him to bail you out all the time. And after you've watched Carson Wentz bail you out week after week, make play outside the pocket week after week, use his legs, use his grit, use his toughness, use his talent, you start to rely on those things. The defense is a totally different defense than it was when Carson Wentz was playing. And I believe on top you of step- the fact that there's just been some natural evolution on that side of the ball, too, and they've gotten better. Right. You're right. You're right. You're better. right. And, and, you know, but, I mean, you, you, make, you make a great point. It's funny how everyone else kind of raises their game when they feel as though the backup needs more help, as opposed to sometimes you go, well, if Carson's out here, he's just going to make a play for us anyway. He's just going to. And you're right. That mindset is tricky. It, it's funny how it can work on a, yeah. on a football team. Long, long story short, what a good problem to have. Today. Overreact. <laughs> yeah. this, today. Was, this was perfect. Yeah. I'll say this. We make fun of Nick Foles because an excited Nick Foles and an upset Nick Foles. All the, the same guy. The difference are, is, is very yeah. minimal, but you know what? That has served him well, and we mm-hmm. have seen him respond in these big situations. Look, that's why he's there. That's why they kept him in the first place. 
We move on to the Bears. They are having different conversations today. And to your point, Lewis, this could have been a very different conversation, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. So I'll say this on this overreaction Monday. The Bears were the biggest disappointment of Wild Card Weekend. Lewis, is that an overreaction? No, it's not an overreaction for me. Yeah, it's subjective. the biggest disappointment of the season. Look, this game was so uneven in many different ways. If you, just look, if you start looking at certain situational t statistics that usually – will tell you whether a team won or lost. They hit some of them that, that would make you believe they won the game, and then otherwise you can see why they, they lost it. Look, they create two turnovers. They have two interceptions. Okay, that's a plus. You hold the Eagles to under two yards rushing per, uh, per carry, and you keep them like, under 50 yards rushing total. That sounds like that's a way that, that's the formula for winning, but they're 0 for 3 in the red area. They're 0 for 3 in the red, red area, and Philadelphia is 2 for 3 in the red area. That's a problem right there. Right there, you, you can see how the game starts to switch. Mm. And in that last drive, five minutes ago, four minutes, 58 seconds ago, you started to see what the difference was with Eddie Jackson not in the game. The secondary wasn't communicating. They weren't matching patterns very quickly. Sherrick McManus started getting victimized. And then down there on the goal line, a couple big plays, the safeties weren't matching real quick. Sherrick McManus on the touchdown pass isn't sitting outside leverage on Golden Tate when he's got a safety sitting inside. And even before that, they're not communicating. You can tell they were confused a little bit when they came out with was essentially a four-by-one set. They had tripped with the back offset to the trip, and you could tell they were looking at each other like, how do we match this up? And you're going, this is the best defense in the NFL, and they looked a little bit lost on that game-winning drive, and that was disappointing. I'm sitting there going, and all that being said, a kick. One kick. Correct. And you're going back into the meeting room, and you're just correcting things and getting ready for the next game. Instead that's of what's planning the, for the next year. That's what's killer about the playoffs. I, so sudden death like that. Uh, to me, it's an overreaction. I believe that the Texans lost at home, too. And I believe the Baltimore Ravens also lost at home. And I believe on this very show and many other shows, everybody was talking about how the Ravens are going to be the toughest out in the playoffs. Nobody wanted to play the Baltimore Ravens, except the Los Angeles Chargers, who traveled west, played an early game on Sunday, and wound up beating the Baltimore Ravens. So, to me, the Bears were a big disappointment. But so were the Ravens. And so, to a lesser extent, were the Texans. But I'm not going to give the Bears the title of the biggest disappointment of Wildcard Weekend. I picked weekend. the Chargers, so I'll go ahead and say that. They, <laughs> <laughs> not I mean, look, I agree with Lou. I mean, I think when you look at what we were kind of talking about with that defense, I mean, we think a lot of people were saying, like, look, with this defense, this is in terms of creating turnovers, in terms of scoring defense, in terms of kind of putting the fear, you know, on the offense because of what they can do in terms of rushing the passer – to have a game at home, have the benefit of crowd noise to aid that defense, facing a backup quarterback to not come away with a win, even though you know there were moments where they played well. Mm -hmm. And honestly, to, in, in a game where um, you know Mitchell Trubisky in his first playoff game throws for over 300 yards, to not come away with a win to me is a huge disappointment. Absolutely. You know, I think it's an over it's an overreaction for me in the sense that you're disappointed that the Bears didn't win. And you, you know, and you said a backup quarterback. He's also last year's Super Bowl MVP. Yeah. You know, so we can't be sitting on one side, one side, side talking that Nick Foles has a possibility of unseating Carson Wentz as he the does. starting quarterback, and then saying, the, and, and, then, and then saying, well, the Bears lost to a backup quarterback. When, when, they when, played to a guy when, that's their when, backup, though. For me, when I'm watching the Ravens, <laughs> right. when I'm watching the Ravens and the Texans, <laughs> and the ineptitude here, of the offenses is what disappoints me. Mm. That's why it's the biggest disappointment to me. You had, you had the Baltimore Ravens not able to make an adjustment to make that game close. And in the end, the, the, the points got close, right, because they but scored it was late. Close. But it was never in jeopardy. Well, yeah, that, this, this team was dominated. What was, right? that, what was disappointing about that game, the Ravens game in particular, it's not so much the play of the players in terms of the Ravens. It was the strategy offensively yes. where you're looking at Lamar Jackson and you're going 15, 20-yard throws down the field outside the numbers. He can't That's do not, it. It's not the ones he, he can He misses make. them. Between the numbers, their offensive efficiency this year when they threw the ball between the numbers – was much higher than it was outside the numbers. So why aren't you doing it? But that the was Chargers also the had, way they attacked him three weeks ago. But the, the Chargers had problems defending between the numbers. Statistically, it bore itself out. You could see it. You could look at it before the game and say, this is where you want to attack them. Outside the numbers, they're much better. Attack them in the middle. Of the, and they don't. Until it's too late, they start moving the foot. Yep. So then you go, man, see, that, those are the things that are very, very frustrating about those games. But I wouldn't put that so much on the players. The strategy in that game killed me. In the really post-game speech, Anthony Lane stood in front of his team and said, we dominated that team. How many mm -hmm. times have the Baltimore Ravens been yep. dominated at home? Not very often. He wasn't wrong.
either. He, was, he wasn't wrong. All right, listen, we're just getting warmed up. It really is a good day for Overreaction Monday. Wild Card Weekend just sets us up perfectly. And coming up, we'll have an early look into the NFC divisional matchups. We'll tell you exactly, because we know, what the Cowboys need to do to upset the Rams. But also, our Sunday standouts, of course, will be the best of Wild Card Weekend, including a few things you might have missed. Stay with us. No, fire! Oh! No, señor! 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 No